Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of Rant World with me, Notorious BLT. So, um, here's the thing. <laughs> this week, I was going to try out recording episodes with audio and video together, um, as in, in, in one track. That didn't work out so well because I kind of just lost my train of thought and kind of blathered on forever in this episode and the next one about a bunch of garbage that really had no business with anything. Um, so we're going to be doing post-commentary on... Uh, what am I doing? Oh, I lo I'm looking at a map. Uh, I'm going to be doing post-commentary on uh, this episode and the next one and probably all the episodes in the future. Um, but here's one thing that I think I mentioned in one of the other ep in one of the episodes that I turned off or turned off that I that I am going to record audio over. Um, I believe what I said was in the future, I am going to keep playing Rain World. I'm going to keep doing Rant World, but it may not end up as uh, much like me talking about serious business and stuff like. Uh, ugh. Uh, serious business, etc. Um, as much, uh, and here's why: I, I may not always have something to talk about, um, but I do want to keep playing Rain World. Is the problem? So what I'm gonna do is there are times when I'm just going to play Rain World, and it's just going to be me talking about the game and just playing the game. And I am going to try to remember to label those episodes so that folks that are tuning in for me to talk about stuff don't you know, aren't, aren't bothered by the, you know, the, they're, they're like, oh yeah, you know, more Notorious BLT talking about stuff. And then they get into it and it's just me talking about being a slug cat. You know, it's a, that's, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm aiming at. Um, so first off, one thing I want to say, this place is horrible, horrible, terrible, and I hate it. Horrible, terrible, and I hate it. This place is infested with arthropods on, on, on the hunter. If you don't know what an arthropod is, it's basically just a fancy term for uh, an, well, not necessarily an insect, but um, a creature which has a hardened exoskeleton. Uh, I don't actually know what the, what is the definition of arthropod? You know what, I'm, I've got, I've got Google. I can look it up. Arthropod. What is the definition of arthropod? Oh, God, why did you put pictures of spiders? Jesus Christ, I hate spiders. Arthropod, an invertebrate animal of the large phylum Arthropoda, such as an insect, spider, or crustacean. Well, that's super great. Thanks for that. Uh, so, uh, mm, invertebrates are things that don't have spines. Uh, I believe that it's also has something to do with having a hardened, or maybe not a hardened, but having an exoskeleton. And maybe it has something else to do with not having lungs as well, or having like not uh, not not your typical kind of lungs, like um, what's uh, what am I thinking of here? Like like uh, spiders. Spiders have book lungs. These like I don't know how to describe them, but I don't, also don't really know why they're called book lungs of all things. Um, but the way that I've seen it on uh, like not graphs. God, what the hell am I trying to say here? The way that I've seen it on. Things like books, like how they show it as like a cutout or cutaway, is it's like uh, almost like it has gills on the bottom of its body. That it's kind of what it looks like as the cutaway. Like it's got like these little chambers where it respirates air. I, I guess. Uh, I don't don't take it from me though. I, I have no idea. I mean, I, I hate spiders in the first place. Okay, screw you, you you freaking. Oh, there's two of them. God, I, I was focused. I think I focused on one completely ignored the other one. Yeah, see, now they're just being jerks and trying to fight over me. Apparently, there's actually two versions of these these horrible creatures, these, these drop wigs. There are some that have, like, these antennae that are, like... Please stop thrashing about with me. It's so gross. Uh, they have, like, these antennae that... Is that one of them? No, that's not one of them, but it looks terrible, just like that. Uh that have, like, little deedlies on the end, like little lit-up deedlies. Deedlies, De deedly bobs, you know what I'm saying. Uh, and I guess they're kind of like this area's version of the, uh, uh, the, the blind lizards, the blind lizards, you know the ones, the, the, the mole lizards. If you, you know, actually watch me play the game, you know what they are. Um, so anyway. Right, we've talked about 
future of the series, kind of. Um, so it, it's going to be something that I'm going to be playing with relative frequency. Uh, there may be times that I'm going to swap back and forth between this and, you know, things like, uh, I don't know, Slay the Spire or... Um, Jesus, what else would I play? Uh, I might even do Binding of Isaac or just something else. Like Monday, I think, is going to be kind of a, a weird slot. If I feel like playing something, that's probably what's going to end up here. Although, God, that's now I'm thinking about it, that's a bunch of work to actually make all the thumbnails and stuff. But anyway, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I, I do want to keep playing Rain World. And like I said, the purpose of this, I think I said it in the last episode, the purpose of this gameplay is that I want to try to get as many unlocks as possible for the arenas. Um, in fact, my goal is to get all of them. And that means that I need to do a whole lot of hunting. <laughs> Because there are a lot of zones that I got to go through. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention today is a little bit of an update to the story about my vacation. So a little bit of it that I didn't actually mention is that not too far from our hotel, when we were walking down the tide pools on our first day, we saw mm, vehicles from law enforcement, as well as a bunch of large trucks. They were blocking the oh, they were blocking the way to. Like a, a ditch on the side of the road. And when I say blocking the way, I mean like they were kind of blocking vision to it. We joked that maybe, you know, there was something that had happened. It turns out we were all correct, and now we all feel horrible about it. Uh, it turns out that there was actually a murder not too far from our hotel room. A man, apparently, a Bar Harbor resident, killed a 19-year-old girl. Why? I have no idea. But that is what happened. Some man killed this girl for reasons that are unknown to me. It, it, it's, I don't want to say this is something that's hard for me to talk about, but like it, it's hard for me to articulate my thoughts on it. God, especially when those fucking drop wigs. Jesus Christ, they're so gross. Ooh, yeah, I get stabbed. Uh, that makes me feel better. So, w when I say, you know, I, I don't know how to really articulate my thoughts about it, I just... No details, as far as I know, were released about why this was done. Or wh why, this, why this person did that. But, I honestly, I, I don't want to say I don't care... Um, because that's, that's not correct. It, it's, it's more that the reasoning doesn't matter as much to me as the fact that somebody just took somebody else's life for really what amounts to no good goddamn reason. Um, any, anybody who's listened to me talk about this stuff before, especially after like, if you don't know when, when girlfriend and I went to Paris some years ago, uh, God, how old, I don't remember how old I was when that, when we did that, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, we, was there a drop wig in there? Is that why I turned around? I don't know. Uh, oh no, I was looking for food. That's what it was. Um, there was a terrorist attack not too long after we left Paris. They killed a lot of people. And uh, when, I, when I was talking about that, I, I expressed much the same feelings as I'm going to express now, which is uh, there is never really a good reason to kill somebody. Some people may disagree with that. Um, I, I do think that uh, there are cases that could be made for um, things like execution for like horrendous criminals who clearly show no signs of remorse. Like, uh, God, who's, who's, a, who's a good candidate here? Jeffrey Dahmer. He's a good candidate. If you don't know who Jeffrey Dahmer is, don't even look him up because the, guy's, the, guy, the guy was a living nightmare. Uh, just horrible, God-awful person. Uh, I actually kind of hesitate to call him a person because it, like, I think monster is a little more accurate. Uh, but to me, outside of cases like that, there really is never a reason to kill someone. Yes, there are unreasonable people in the world. Yes, they may have some sway on your life at some point. That is never a reason to end someone's life. Things can always be discussed. At least that's how I uh, that that's how I try to see the world. And I'm obviously sometimes I I am I don't want to say I'm proven wrong, but I am uh, not showing the error of my ways. God, what the hell am I trying to say? <sighs> so, sometimes you realize that maybe your thoughts are not entirely complete, and you thought they were, and they're not. 
And uh, sometimes that just th that happens. Like uh, I remember a friend of mine who I've talked to several times about capital punishment, etc., um, was talking to me about. Please don't. I I hate scavengers. I hate them so much. <laughs> I mean, I love and hate them. They're so cool. But like, screw these guys. They're jerks. Uh, you know, we were talking about capital punishment, and uh, he had expressed that he had the view that the capital punishment was wrong until he read a thing by this FBI agent who had the same view until he met a serial killer. And then his view on the world basically changed entirely. Uh, I hate the fact that you just take my stuff. It's so annoying. Um... So, it's it, it just it's one of those things like these people that can do horrible, heinous acts and then just be happy about it or, you know, have absolutely no remorse about it. It's mind-blowing. Please. This, this, to me, is one of the hardest parts of this game, is being able to just sit there and wait for these clowns to... Yep, there it goes. Freaking Chieftain was like, no, stab it. <laughs> Stupid jerk. Oh... See what I'm saying? There's no reason to ever kill anybody. Especially slug cats. Don't ever hurt cats. Actually, you know what? Here's another part of that. Don't ever hurt animals. And to me, anybody that hurts an animal on purpose, like, for pleasure, maybe one of the biggest jerks on Earth. And it's actually, if I remember right, it, it, I know it was, like, causing harm to animals, that, that is. I know it was at some point, and it may still be, I don't know, uh, considered a sign that you might be a serial killer? Or, like, on your way to becoming one? Uh, you know, c causing harm to those that are essentially helpless in, in, in under your power. It's just... <sighs> I guess this, this can all come down to my philosophy on life, which is... Right, well, I, I don't mean, mean to make... Oh, I don't mean to make it sound like I have this, like, printed out somewhere, or, like, some actu actual you know, thing thought up in, like, some super concrete notion. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yep, well, there he goes, biting me a lot. That butthole. That, that's a giant spider for you. Just biting me over and over again until I pass out. Uh, so my my outlook on life, I guess, is uh, the way I would put it. Um, oh, yeah, here, I, I'm, I'm actually attempting to see if I can restart because I am so tired of the Shaded Citadel. <laughs> Yeah, that's not going to happen, pal. I'm sorry to tell you. Future me knows what's about to happen. Uh, but fear not, things get better. Uh, for for old, the old hunter here. Um, anyway, so my outlook on life is essentially... Try to understand. And if you can't understand, ask questions. And above all, don't purposely cause harm to someone else. I, I guess that's the best way for me to sum up the way I try to live my life. And I, I know I've, I've talked about this previously, but I'm going to say it again. I don't always succeed. And the, one of the more important things is that even if you don't succeed all the time, you still try. Um, and you try to get better constantly. The, the, life is all about, maybe not all about improvement, but it's improvement is certainly a big part of it. Uh, God, how the hell do we get here from freaking talking about murder? Jesus Christ. Well, it, you know what? I, I'm going to I'm gonna jump to something a little lighter for a second here. We might come back to this, but I'm going to jump to something a little lighter. So, while we were in Maine, we also went to this place that sells olive oil and balsamic vinegar. And you might think, like, hey, what's the big deal? It's just olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Like, who cares? Well, first off, I care. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, I, I do care, but uh, the the reason that it's so special, I guess. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. There's a there's a freaking spider that's spitting garbage at us. So I tried to get around it. Yeah, see, there's one of the grubs. The spitting spiders are just God, they're horrible. Uh, I think we actually tangle with him a little more, and I finally murder him. Maybe. Do I murder him? I don't know if I do. Oh God, it's painful to hear or to to watch that. Oh, there he goes. 
don't remember if I actually end up killing this thing or not. Ooh. Nope, I'm unconscious. Son of a bitch. Well, uh, anyway, we went to this olive oil place, uh, uh, and the, the special thing about this place was that it has, um, like, I don't want to say flavors, but basically olive oil that's been infused with other stuff. So we bought three different kinds, or three, three different things. God, they're so fast. Oh, that thing you saw running below me was actually a wolf spider. Um, and I'm trying to, like, be able to see the wolf spider and be able to stab it. That's the problem with holding this stuff is you have to hold the mask in one hand. Uh, anyway, uh, we had we had purchased blood orange infused olive oil and dark chocolate infused balsamic vinegar because it there was a thing that uh, you know in there that said hey these are some great pairings if you want to get our cookbook then we have some stuff about all these things you can blah 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 all right so we got those we also we also got a uh, a truffle oil and. Uh, it smelled delicious. <laughs> uh, but this past Saturday, a girlfriend and I went and uh, made this recipe that she found that uses blood orange olive oil and dark chocolate uh, balsamic vinegar. And what it is is you take chicken thighs and you marinate them in this mixture. This mixture is the balsamic vinegar with the you know the dark chocolate infusion. Um, the blood orange olive oil and let's see what else was in there shoot it was those two salt pepper let's see salt pepper there were seven ingredients that went in there lemon juice dijon mustard i know there was something else dang it shoot what was it there was one other oh i see you drop wig i see you I can't remember what the heck it was. Poop. What in the world did I throw in there? I, I, I don't remember. I just can't, I can't seem to recall. Anyway, uh, there, was, uh, there was like teaspoons of stuff. Dang it. You know what? Hang on. I have the power. I have the internet. What was it? Email? Let, you tell me exactly what went in there. It was, let's see, Dijon, lemon juice... Garlic cloves, that's what it was, garlic cloves. Okay. So you throw the garlic cloves in there, along with uh, along with all this stuff, and you put that with the trimmed chicken thighs, and I say trimmed because you're cutting, you shut up out there with your dang loud engines. Uh, with the, um, there's another drop wig, way the hell up there, you freaking butthole. <sighs> They're just everywhere. Uh, with, with the chicken thighs, and you trim off like the excess skin and stuff. And you leave, the, the recipe says to, to marinate it for at least three hours, which is fine. Uh, we did it for like about four and a half. I personally, I think I would do it for a little more next time. Uh, so then when the marination is over, I'm trying to kill that mouse. I, earlier in this episode, when I when this was basically just my, my stream of garbage thought, um, I kept saying things like, I don't want to kill these guys because they're so cute. But at this point, I'm like, I'm hungry. I need to eat. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so... Marinate the chicken thighs, and then uh, the recipe calls for putting. Um, oh, I just messed it up so bad. For putting them on a pan, like a deep pan, after you're done marinating them, and cooking them in the oven. I think it's like 400 degrees for three hours, or not three hours for one hour. What the hell am I say? Three hours. <laughs> three hours. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you, you grease the pan. I used the butter. Uh, at 400 degrees for an hour. All right. So, and this this uses four and a half pounds. Yeah, four and a half pounds of chicken thighs. We had like 4.7 pounds, something like that. Uh, which I don't remember what that translates to in kilograms. It's like 8.8, um, .8, I think. 8.8 .8 kilograms. Or wait, or is it a kilogram is 2.2 pounds. Shit, I don't remember. It, it's one of the, I, I don't remember the conversion. You can look it up. So, uh, four, four and a half pounds of uh, chicken thighs. So, you throw it all in there with, in, into this pan with the marinade, and like I said, the pan's got to be deep. So we're talking like a lasagna pan or something like that. The reason it's got to be deep. Oh, it also has to be able to take a flame or uh, the heat from an electrical element. Um, 
because you need to use this pan and put it on a stove afterwards, okay? So, you cook the thighs for about an hour, and then after, if they're done, which in our case they were, you take them out, and then you put them on a platter, and you cover them with foil, just to keep them warm. Also, it kind of continues the cooking process just a little bit. Uh, I don't remember if I try to rest here or not. <laughs> I think I go back for some food. Ooh, it's such a bad idea. Uh, so... You, you cook the thighs, like I said, and then afterwards you put them on the plate, etc. and so on. Then you take the pan, you put it on the stove, and you put in... Uh, God, what the hell was it? It is... Let's see here. That's it. A half a cup of chicken stock and the juice from half of an orange. And you can get, you can zest it a little bit for some garnish or, and also there's some parsley for garnish, but we didn't do that. Uh, cause really you just, you don't need to, I, I don't think, I mean, maybe it adds something. I don't know. Uh, so you cook that on, on the stove for like five minutes and you scrape up all the fond, which is the, the brown bits in the pan. Oh, this is just so bad. <laughs> it actually hurts to watch this a little. Um, please. Uh, yeah, it's so close. So you scrape it all up, and then uh, you ladle that on top of the the chicken, the the finished chicken, and then you eat it. We we served it over rice, and let me tell you, dude, these chicken thighs were delicious. They were so delicious. Um, I think that they would be even better if we had marinated them for just a little bit longer. But since we didn't get the chance to do that, or we, not that we didn't get the chance, but I, you know, we, I started a little bit late and whatever. Um, I probably would marinate them for maybe like half a day or maybe a full day. I don't know. It says to, it, it, the recipe says not to marinate them for around 24 hours because probably just like breaks down some of the, the stuff in the chicken too much. Oh, yeah, this was something else, man. I don't think I'd ever done not, not this in specific right here, what's going on, but like what's about to happen in just a few moments. Whew. It, uh, it was no bueno. I'll tell you that much. It was no bueno. It was, uh, <laughs> a little surprising. I gotta say, I didn't expect the water to be as high as it was. Um, but basically I, I, I will, you know, spoiler alert. There is a chamber that we go into that is going to be full of water. Right there! It's full of water, and I can't see Jack. But we can see just a little bit. Although, like, we're lit up a tiny bit, and I don't... I don't know. We've, it's like we've got the gifted knowledge or of, of language, but we don't have the... We don't have the glowiness of uh, eating a neuron. So I don't know what is going on. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I'm starting to think that maybe what I might do for our next go around for the hunter, I might try to scale the exterior. Maybe. I don't know how easy or hard that's going to be. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be extremely difficult. <laughs> like, extremely, extremely difficult. Uh, although I have seen other people do it before. Like, they go from, I think it's like farm arrays to chimney canopy, and then from chimney canopy to the exterior, and then just you know, climb that way. I, I I don't know if that's really in my my skills. Like, I, I don't know if I have that skill set in order to pull that off, but I mean, I'll try, dude. I'll try. Uh, so let's see. What else can I talk about for food? Oh! The, the, the previous night, we had uh, leftover pork loin that I had made forever ago and uh, don't worry it was frozen it's, it's we're, we're fine we didn't get some crazy food related illness uh but uh this pork loin is basically made by stuffing the pork loin with uh garlic it's like a head of garlic per per loin um and then you marinate it with uh uh moho which is a like a it's just like a marinade blend this this scavenger, for whatever reason, just like he felt like he was an old man or something because he's like having trouble walking. He's going real slow and just kind of looking. Eh, don't throw it at me, dude. I don't want it. Stop. See, I give you spears. Take them. Yeah, see? I'm a nice man. I'm, I'm a very nice slug cat. You don't need to be mean. 
Yeah, there you go. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> yesterday, which is Saturday, I pointed out to girlfriend, because we also had fries to go along with it. Uh, I pointed out to girlfriend that while we had fries, we totally missed the opportunity to do truffle fries because of this olive oil that we had purchased. <laughs> and we were both just like, no, we've missed out on deliciousness. But, you know, it's not like it can't be fixed. We, we can always do something else later. I think you can actually drop down from there. And if you, I think there's water down below that you can possibly hit. I still have no idea how you get to those fruits or th those, those bug children. Please don't. I know at some point I finally just lose my, my patience and murder, or try to murder the scavengers and then realize how bad an idea that actually is. Yeah, see, they're, they're just like going all kinds of bonkers. Please just leave me the hell alone. Scavengers are like representative of some of the worst people. <laughs> the ones that just won't leave you the frick alone. He's going to kill me, isn't he? Yep, there he goes. Yep, representative of some of the worst people on earth. Just, hey, how you doing? Death. <laughs> Jerk. <sighs> uh, so, on our way back from this main vacation, I was talking to a friend of mine about, uh, and it, it, uh, this, is, this is Rig, obviously, because we went with Rig and Lucky, um, about uh, a couple of different games. Um, I actually didn't realize that both Rig and Lucky both play, uh, well, I, I knew that Rig plays Slay the Spire, but I didn't know that Lucky does. And, uh, we had talked about Slay the Spire a little bit earlier in the vacation, and of course, girlfriend was like, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. But she's, she's a good sport, and she, you know, deals with our, our nerdiness. Not to say that girlfriend is not a, a geek slash nerd, because she totally is. Uh, and it, she would not find that insulting for me to say that whatsoever. She actually would love that I say that. Uh, that is a scavenger that's crawling through there that I am terrified of. Uh, and uh, it, it was just funny to hear, like, what people's... How, how different people's perceptions of the game are. So, like, Rig really likes the Silent, which if you don't know anything about Slay the Spire, Silent is basically... It, it, the Slay the Spire is like a, a roguelite card game where you are going from room to room, floor to floor, uh, building a deck and killing monsters. Okay? Um, to uh, Killing monsters to obtain loot until you finally get to the boss of that specific area, and then you kill the boss, and then you move on to the next area until you get to the very last floor, and you kill the last boss, and you hopefully win. Um... So, Rig likes to play this character called the Xylent, which is like a poisony rogue person, like a, a sneaky stabby type, okay? Lucky likes to play the Ironclad, which is the one that I thought I was going to be the best at because it just seems like gain strength, beat face with giant hammers and swords and axes and all kinds of other implements that are good for orcs to use on people's faces. Well, as you've all seen, maybe not my best class. <laughs> Um, but I've actually come to really like the defect, which is like their weird robo mage. I don't know, man. If you haven't seen the defect, just like look up some of the videos because goddamn, the defect is just a weirdo, but he's awesome. I love him. But anyway, we were talking about that. Um, and on our way home, we talked a little bit about Slay the Spire, but we also discussed uh, a game that Rig has never played called Factorio. And he was telling me, he was like, you know, it just, it looks like a game that's right up my alley. And I was like, dude, it so totally is because Rig is the kind of person that, is he gets systems very, very easily. Uh, he figures them out very quickly, I think. Um, and I don't really know how to describe it. It's not like... Uh, I don't want to say he's like a pro gamer or anything like that. And I don't mean that as an insult, okay? Because I, I hate it when people are like, ah, oh, you know, you're pro or whatever. Like, just just lay off, dude. You're not, you're not a pro gamer unless you're getting paid for it, okay? <laughs> that, that means, like, a professional gamer, it, it's somebody who gets paid to play games. Uh, is that a, no, thank God, that's not a, wait, is it a drop wig? Oh, <gasps> it was, what? No. Did it, how did I bypass it? How? What? I, okay, well, you know what, whatever. Um, so, uh, uh, Factorio, if you don't know, is a game that is like, yeah, man, whatever you're saying out there, I, I totally agree. Uh, it's, it's a game that I find difficult to describe. It's like, if you took the graphics from 
Command and Conquer Red Alert and translated that into a game about automation and building a factory that does really crazy stuff, you would have Factorio. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's what I'm going with. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's an awesome game that I absolutely love. It is certainly not for everybody. Uh, but it, it was just nice to hear somebody say, hey, man, what about this game? Like, it looks like it'd be right up my alley. And me being able to be like, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Uh, on the subject of Command and Conquer, I recently heard on uh, this s Saturday. Yeah, it was this Saturday, so that was the June 9th, That apparently, Electronic Arts is putting out another Command and Conquer. I am uh, Command and Conquer was a real-time strategy game series that first appeared in I want to say it was the early 1990s. I think it was the early 1990s. And it, it, it the series is quite good, aside from the last installment, which was kind of meh. Uh, and when I say the last installment, I mean, I think it was like Command & Conquer 4? <laughs> it was basically the one that didn't exactly follow the formula of Command & Conquer. Exactly. I mean, it had, like, units and stuff, but, like, the way you build bases was weird, and, like, your base is mobile, and you upgrade it, and it had microtransactions, and just, ugh. Uh, but anyway, so they, apparently Electronic Arts is going to be releasing a mobile version of Command & Conquer that looks like crap. So, uh, thanks, um, EA, for basically destroying one of my favorite game series of all time. You bunch of jerks. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know why, it, I don't know why they do it. And it, 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 it boggles my mind, because EA is also apparently publishing a game called, uh, Sea of Solitude, I think is what it's called. I think it's Sea of Solitude. Or Solitude at Sea? No, I think it's Sea of Solitude. Um, which is an indie game that looks really good. And uh, there is a games journalist. I, I for, the love of, for, the, for the life of me, I can't remember what her last name is. I think it's Alana Pierce. I think that's her name. I, I believe she's Australian. But uh, she was covering that game on Twitter, I just saw her mention it, and she was saying, just remember that EA does not benefit, or does not profit from games like this. But the indie developer does. So be sure to support this if you like it. And I thought, you know, that's interesting. I wonder why EA does that. Maybe it's to keep face? Because full, full disclosure, I am one of those people that believes that EA is mostly just terrible. I don't want to say evil because that makes it sound like, you know, they're mustache twirling, snidely whiplash jerk bags that, well, then again, they kind of are in my opinion, but uh, that, you know, their only drive is to make money and screw people. <laughs> I, I, maybe not screw people, but uh, to um, screw developers and destroy seri uh, uh, game series that people once loved, like Dungeon Keeper. If you never played Dungeon Keeper, I highly suggest you go to Good Old Games or GOG.com, that's G O G.com, and check out Dungeon Keeper. Dungeon Keeper 1. Dungeon Keeper 1 was great. This guy is about to kill me, isn't he? I forget. Uh, but EA just, yeah, I'm just so tired of scavengers right now. So, I don't know why. EA does the things they uh, does the things they does does the things they do, but I can only imagine it's for profit. Uh, I hear somebody lurking outside my door, potentially, maybe I don't know. Yes, somebody lurking outside my door. Yes, girlfriend. What is it? What's that? What are you bringing me? What is this? <gasps> kiwi. Thank you, girlfriend. Give me a kissy. Mwah. I love you. Thank you for the kiwi. Mwah. Girlfriend is so nice. She just brought me kiwi. How much time do we have left in this episode? A decent amount of time. I'm not going to eat this kiwi right now because that would be rude. I don't want to make, like, chewing sounds in the mic because that would be horrible. Uh, anyway, I, I know that EA has basically turned themselves from a publisher that is... Long ago, EA, if you don't know, long ago EA, or Electronic Arts, used to be a game company that you could depend on to make really good games. This was long, long ago. Uh, now... And for maybe, I don't even know how, how long it's been. Maybe like the past decade, decade and a half. 
somewhere around there. I don't know exactly when it started happening, but EA transitioned from we would we want to make good games to we only are concerned with profits and the games be damned. Like I said, I don't know when the hell that happened, but it is very frustrating that it has happened. Uh, that they appear to only be concerned with money. And you could argue, well, they're a company. Of course, they're going to be concerned with money. What bothers me is that it seems like that is all they are concerned with. They do not seem to care about the quality of the games that they produce. Uh, for example, and I'm sorry if you enjoy these games, but the Star Wars Battlefront series, the most recent installment, was trash. I'm sorry to tell you. Uh, if you don't believe that, I, I honestly don't know what to, what to say. Um, but it was basically just... Uh, my, my outlook on these kinds of things is that when you make a game that has microtransactions as one of the main elements of the game, you are absolutely sacrificing design space for good game design in order to make a profit off of potentially children. Because these games, while they say that you should be X age to play the game, that's not always how it happens. We, we know that children play games they're not supposed to. <laughs> or that, that the rating system says they're not supposed to. Which is also why I have a problem with games like Overwatch. Yeah, sure, it's, you know, you're not paying to win the game. That was one of the other problems with Star Wars Battlefront, is it was definitely pay to win. Which, pay to win, never, ever okay. At any point, any time, ever. Never okay. So, uh, what about games like, um... Oh, yes, I forgot that you show up and terrorize me for a short amount of time. Uh... What about games like... God, what the hell is the one I was talking about? Shoot. I, I am having trouble remembering what the hell I was just talking about. God damn it. Oh, Overwatch. So when you have games like Overwatch that are uh, cosmetic only, there, there is an argument to be made that that's not so bad. I would argue, not the opposite, but that... Uh, games like Overwatch, while I don't have a problem with Overwatch per se, the fact that you have essentially introduced a gambling system to children is nearly unforgivable. Blizzard, also a company I used to have a lot of faith in, and no longer do, which is extremely unfortunate. Because even if you don't want to admit it, children do play that game. They do play Overwatch. They are experiencing the gambling nature that is Overwatch. And you may disagree that Overwatch isn't gambling, but you have loot boxes. And you may, yeah, you don't have to pay for it. But you are still introducing this concept of gambling to children. Getting them used to it. Maybe not used to it, but... How can I put this? It... Yeah, well, actually, basically, just the way I've already said it. it. You're introducing gambling to children. And to me, that's just not okay. I don't care how many hours or whatever it takes to unlock all the stuff in the game. I don't give a crap. You you have you have introduced the concept of gambling to small children, and that is just not acceptable, in my opinion. They are not... In general, children are just not uh, old and developed enough to understand and deal with gambling in a rational way. Um... Depending on their age, obviously. I mean, some, some kids also grow up much faster than others because they're forced to deal with more adult things. Why are people so obnoxious with their freaking loud music? I don't know if you can hear it. I'm hoping you can't, but goddamn. How much time left in this? Uh, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Um, so I should probably wrap this up. So I don't even remember how the hell I got on this subject. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, there's unlockables down there, buddy. You got to go get those. Go get them. Yeah, yeah, go get them. I forget what this one is. It's like a lizard or something? No, it's a... Oh, it's like a box. I don't know what the hell that is. It's a box with wings? I don't know what that, that creature is. Or if it even is a creature. I have no idea. Okay, I guess I probably got that one before. I... Falling down. Oh, right. We got on this because of EA. And their... Garbage habits. So, I'm excited to see that they are at least doing something with an indie that hopefully they won't destroy the studio like they did with Dead Space. 
because I really think that this, I think it was Visceral Games was the name of the studio. I think that they did a very good job with Dead Space and uh, potentially Dead Space 2. Um, I don't really know that much about Dead Space 2 because I haven't played it all the way. I've only played a little bit of it. Uh, but, but, God, uh, oh, Bullfrog as well. Bullfrog, uh, Bullfrog, I think it's just called Bullfrog, not Bullfrog Games. They're the ones that made Dungeon Keeper. Um, basically, they just took those uh, those game companies and kind of pooped all over them. So it, it's just it, it's very disappointing to see these giants, you know, the, these once great companies fall into disrepute. I guess is how I'd put it. Also, uh, I'm hoping. Game companies like From Software don't succumb to the same garbage. But you never really know, I suppose. But anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, folks. I hope you all did enjoy it. If you did enjoy what to do, that's going to be for me, Notorious BLTA. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye, folks.